I wasn't playing as well as I would have liked to, and I started to feel the pressure um, to perform. After the season, I was just totally relieved and uh, went, into a, went into a mania. I was partying a little bit, self-medicating. I was doing drugs, so I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't getting good sleep. Um, I was just really relieved that the season was over. Everything was going well right up until the uh, first uh, day of minicamp. I totally lost all confidence, fell into a depression and uh, didn't know what was happening to me. It was very, very frightening. Um, I had no confidence, almost, I couldn't think, um, I couldn't punt very well. I mean, it was a struggle every day to get out of bed, number one, number two, to eat, number three, to work out, number four, to go out and play. I was struggling through a couple different medications they were trying me on. I think uh, they put me on uh, one medication, Effexor, and it made me spin into a mania, and I think that's how they diagnosed me with bipolar. The day of our first preseason game, I had a panic attack. Couldn't catch the ball. I didn't know how I was going to perform. And at that time, I mean, I really didn't know what was happening to me. I, I couldn't feel my hands. I had shortness of breath. I couldn't think. But it turned out my first punt went 65 yards. And it was just a matter of letting going, allowing it to manifest. But I still didn't really know what my um, condition was all about. I was very confused. Uh, and that, that, whole, um, that whole season was, was, was really tough. I still continue to self-medicate with cannabis and alcohol just trying to make the pain go away. There was suicidal ideation. Um, in fact, I thought about it every day. I wanted to, um, I, wanted, I wanted my brain to stop working as it was. And I just wanted to, you know, be normal again. And when it came to the diagnosis itself, I just, I, look, I, I looked at it as I was being presented with, a, with an obstacle in life and I needed to get through it. Being somewhat of an outcast as a punter, um, the stigma of, of being labeled bipolar really didn't bother me at the time. I just kind of embraced it and, and ran with it. After my mania subsided, I fell into a deep depression and really I started to experience more uh, anxiety than usual. Hopelessness, it was uh, um, a separation from reality a little bit. Um, I, I just really didn't really have a desire to, to live. Luckily, I had some real good support from my family. Um, there were some doctors with the Ravens that, uh, that did uh, assist me and give me some medication to get through it. But um, it was probably the toughest year of my life. What I started to do uh, was, was really start taking care of myself. You know, I, I, was, I stopped drinking, uh, stopped smoking. Um, I started sleeping better. I started eating more healthy. I made sure that I exercised, something I always did, but I made an emphasis to get in there and do it. And in that season, I decided that I was really going to clean up my life and, and start handling my, my life in a, different, in a different manner. And I chose to uh, really, really start working out hard. And unfortunately, the following year, I broke my foot during minicamp, and that was the end of my career. I had to go through somewhat of a grieving period, I think, um, of, uh, of the fact that my life wasn't going to be the same. Making the transition from professional sports to, you know, Citizen Q, as I say, is, is tough. Um, you know, you, everything is structured for you. Um, you don't have to make a lot of decisions. All your meals are planned. And uh, when you don't have a good um, schedule and effect, especially when you're, you're dealing with bipolar disorder and or depression, um, it can be chaotic. And experiencing this depression and now taking this illness really for what it's worth and really, really staying um, focused on, on, uh, on therapy, staying focused on, on exercising, focused on um, compassion towards other people. I mean, that's this is, I think, where it's going. I mean, I, I, I was very judgmental of other people, and especially in a manic state, you can, you can lash out and say things, and my anger got the best of me um, this last bout around. And um, it has a lot to do with my relationship with my father. I think I had a tough time um, letting go of a lot of childhood uh, issues, and all of us, all of us deal with that. I mean, um, uh, bipolar can 
can definitely manifest uh, because of some um, environmental issues as well. And if you don't deal with those problems, they're just going to fester until they manifest into something bigger. One thing about uh, bipolar disorder and depression is that a lot of times we, we don't notice the, the, uh, the actions or the change in moods and change in emotions that we have. And it's good to have uh, family support, a close friend, a boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, or just uh, some peers that can actually help you maybe notice the, the changes and help you and help you move towards a more healthy way of approaching life. I mean, everybody's going to go through some, some cycling um, with uh, bipolar disorder and depression. And, uh, and having someone there to maybe point that out to you is something that can be very beneficial.